Welcome back to Nerd Threats, where anyone can be a kid. As always, I'm Tyler, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Ike Siemens. Oh, shit, what up? Oh, shit, what up? Ike, today we went to the movies, and we saw something something weirdly spectacular. Dude, unexpectedly spectacular. Yeah, and I'm not a big M. Night Shyamalan fan, because all of his movies generally are kind of the same movie. They are. But we went and saw Glass today, and... Damned if that was not a good movie. That was probably the first M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong uh, movie that I have seen in a long fucking time. First off, because I, I just got sick of his shit. And second off, because, well, I mean, it's all the same shit, so. Oh, what? A big, <laughs> a big twist at the end? Never saw that coming. Right. The Village. Ah, oh, dude. God. Signs everything ever put out by him. Lady in the Water. That was actually probably one of the I better Lady in the Water quite a bit actually. That I actually but it had a big twist at the end. Yeah. That was a, That's kind of his formula. Yeah. But huge twist. Yeah, and also you don't ever see him doing sequels, but then, you know, he pits out Split, you find out that's a sequel to Unbreakable out of nowhere. Like no Randomly. no mention of it being a sequel at all or anything like that just a sweet little post credit scene I was like oh shit Bruce Willis like what's up yeah and then they come out with glass and bring it full circle which was surprising as hell like like a 20 year period like between like the first movie Unbreakable and this movie I don't think that was planned honestly well apparently I did read that like James McAvoy the guy from Split who also plays Professor Xavier, like, yeah. didn't know that he was going to be playing the same character in a sequel when he did Split. Really? Yeah. So, I don't so think he, anybody knew. He had no idea that it was a sequel. Well, I think he knew that it may have been a sequel to, like, to Unbreakable, but I don't think he knew there was going to be a sequel to, to Split to and Unbreakable. Sequel, yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. No shit. So, story-wise, what did you think? Dude, it actually did a really fucking good job tying everything together and, you know, tying up some loose ends. And, yeah, it was good. It was kind of like, uh, did you ever see Lost? The TV show Lost? That's all the first couple seasons. Dude, it uh, definitely worth watching up until the last season. Just uh, not the last, like, couple episodes. Just fuck those, you know? Fuck those last Yeah, I heard about that. A lot of people were season. pissed about that. Yeah. If you uh if you read up on what was supposed to happen, like from the actual director or whatever, and then you just watch everything up until the last half of the last season, then you're fucking tits. You're good. That's all you need. Don't ever watch the last few episodes. Yeah. So who who was the standout character for you in the movie though? Oh, standout character. Dude. For me, it was James McAvoy. Really. Yeah, he, he he holds the spotlight dude, down really he's well. He's such a good actor. Yeah. Like the ability to play a character that has multiple personality disorder is like really impressive. Like very impressive. It's a very hard thing to do. Like probably the best one I think I ever saw was like Kevin Costner and Mr. Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that one was really good. But to be able to do a multiple personality disorder where you're holding like where you're switching between like twelve different personalities. No shit. And the thing about all the personalities you switch to is they're all like so different. You know, he's got like the nine year old kid and then he's got like the well to do British lady and he's got like the super bro and like all the different personalities he switches to, like, are like already hard things to try and pull off as like a, in and of themselves. As a way, yeah. like a regular white guy. Yeah. But to like switch, and the way he switches is so like effortless, it seems like he just fucking melts into one different personality to the other. I wonder how many shots they had to do on some of those, like where he had, um, where he had like, you know, multiple transitions in the same scene. Um, because there's a couple of times that you'd see him go through three or four before it even cut away from him. And I was like, that's fucking crazy to be on camera for that entire time. No cuts. Like, yeah, they weren't cutting. It was just like a straight on wide shot. A lot yeah. of times, which was super interesting. Yeah. And so it's like to be able to even switch between like three or four fluidly. I mean, is that that well practiced or is that, you know, just that many fucking takes? <laughs> you know what I you mean? You got to wonder. But I mean, he's, he's always been a good actor. I've liked him. 
I heard that he fucking first popped up as Professor Xavier or pretty much watched everything else he's been in and they've all been good yeah they've all been good so yeah I would say he was definitely the breakout character of the movie yeah I think well and the other characters are are pretty well established from the first movie you know so I feel like this kind of just gave him more room to to grow as a character whereas the other ones they just kind of threw in tidbits here and there to just kind of add to and amplify you know with cut scenes and this that and the other thing and you know flashbacks and shit like that yeah 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 so so spoiler alert what was your thoughts on like all the different twists that happened in the end because there was like four to five twists at the end I mean there was the whole situation spoiler where freaking it turned out that the fucking train that Bruce Willis's character was on where he was the only survivor was the same train that James McAvoy's dad was on that was fucking derailed by Mr. Glass there was the whole fucking yeah I mean it was just a whole mess of things and then like there was the girl who was his like victim who like helped him even though she was like his victim Mm -hmm. that was super that was a really interesting like character development yeah they're like you're the only person who can reach him yeah the physical contact that he always craved and desired never been given to him um you connected to him on a different level and were able to actually give him some kind of physicality that he was comfortable with and uh (laughs) you know break through some of those you know barriers in his mind and stuff um yeah dude just leading up to you know the great big reveal of you know secret society trying to keep superhumans beat down and under wraps and and or just dead it was like they did what heroes tried to do but they did it well and not shittily they did kind of like an anti-hero secret society where they're just normal fucking people but it's a group of them that they're Lex Luthers you know they don't want supers they don't need supers supers are dangerous so they take them out and keep them under wraps and this that and the other thing and then it's like oh just come to find out you know all this shit was planned out even through not knowing like all of this situation you know Mr. Glass fucking genius extraordinaire they just gave him the keys to their fucking mansion and oh, watched yeah. him burn it to the fucking ground. Yeah, that was super interesting. Fuck you. His character, he was probably, like, my least favorite of the characters out of the big three of that movie. Out of, like, the three the three supers or whatever. Not because he was a bad character. He just was my least favorite out of all three of them. Uh, just because I already knew the character pretty well. So it's probably, it was just, like, not surprising that he was super smart to me. But yeah, that definitely in credit scene where, you know, he's like, we're going to go to this tower and everybody's going to see that you're a super. And then they like, the, you know, he ends up dying and then they all end up dying. Spoiler. And, you know, like the secret society is like, yeah, like we stopped him. And then it's like, oh shit, he had a double, double master plan the whole time. Yeah. He well, fucking like, like recorded everything and streamed it and shit. Like when he revealed his initial master plan, you know, oh, we're going to this tower and this, that and the other thing, blah, blah, blah. And and then, you know, you see uh, the son of Bruce Willis, you know, looking up information on, you know, what's-his-face's dad, James McAvoy's dad in the show, and you see him just, like, freak out. And then also when Mr. Glass is reading up on the file and casework stuff, he was looking at, um, you looking know, at James McAvoy's, James like, McAvoy's dad yet again. Um, catches his eye and then starts reading into his dad and yet again he's also like drops his file and like holy shit okay so this guy is one of my creations too or whatever and then you know the culmination of that coming out too early quote unquote it seemed like you know with him being like oh don't tell him that yet you know that's not supposed to come out yet it was like you know he, he even he sold it to the other people in the fucking movie like their characters at least you know he sold it that you know this is supposed to be taken down at you know this fucking big brand new tower and all this fancy shit you know even he sold it to them even though the entire time he had his own fucking side backup master super plan extraordinaire and it was like 
god damn, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what's funny is when he was going over that plan, I knew that wasn't the plan, but only because I was like, movie studio ain't gonna pay to pit that tower in the movie. <laughs> I was like, the movie studio ain't gonna pay for a big fight scene like that. Fair enough. So that was like the only reason I knew it wasn't the plan, because I was like, no, they're not gonna like, they're not gonna have a big blowout, like Marvel, like movie scene type situation. They don't have the budget for that shit. Well, and what I kind of figured with that was, is I came to the same conclusion just with different route. Um, you know, in my logic, um, you know, being that I've, you know, studied movies and shit for so fucking long, I'm obsessed with them to some degree. Um, the breakdown of time frames, they were too far along in the movie to throw in a big fight scene like that. To do that, they would literally have to be like, here's the announcement of go- us going to that, and then jump right into it because I knew how long the movie was about approximately so it was like you're too late in the movie to do a big fight scene like that there's no way in hell you're gonna transition fluidly over to that unless you pull a fucking Fantastic Four you know reboot and just cut out all the good shit you know what I mean yeah. like the whole <laughs> you, that whole transition is gonna be choppy and shit on you know so I was like I hope like hell they don't fucking do that and I don't figure they would because of how fluid this movie has traveled and progressed so far. So for me, I kind of knew the same thing. You know, I was like, there's no way in hell they're getting to that fucking tower. Um, that just wouldn't make sense. They might get to the outside of the tower or something. Um, for a second, I thought it was like, oh, they're going to be on the way to the tower or something yeah, like that's going to happen. Maybe. I definitely thought they were going to make it out of the parking lot yeah, of like the asylum. Something like towards the city lines and stuff. Where it was like, oh, like the people happens. almost saw it, but they yeah. didn't see it yeah. type situation. So who do you think was the weakest character? Weakest character out of the main three? or just Out of the main general? three, yeah. Out of the main three. Honestly, I'd say it's Bruce Willis's character. He was definitely like almost tied up for me with, with uh, fucking Samuel Jackson's character. See, dude, Mr. Glass, for me personally, was probably I was I'd venture to say even my top yeah um just because um he didn't get as much character development obviously in the last two movies well he didn't have any lines in the first like half of this movie yeah you know he didn't really have nearly as much as Bruce Willis and you know screen time at least as Bruce Willis and fucking James McAvoy um but at the same time like the progressment the further progressment of his character from the first movie you know that huge time gap because it's the first time we've seen him again and then you know you don't really even get to see him till halfway through the movie let alone have any interaction with him you know there's no you know lines or anything like that for i just feel like they managed to progress him so greatly in such a small amount of time you know further than what he was already at which was genuinely impressive because you know, I always kind of liked his character. I understood his character, you know, well watching the first movie. And I was like, God, I mean, I get him, though. You know, I feel for him. And so to be able to take that and further progress that, I was like, that's pretty fucking impressive. You know, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes tops and progress him so fucking far in that short little window of time you know to a final culmination even and i was like god damn that's pretty fucking that's just pretty dope no they did they did do a good job with his character development so what was your thought on the uh the doctor the like psychiatrist lady crazy shrink bitch yeah i Um, knew immediately as soon as i thought i was like she's somehow gonna be the bad guy of this story well the funny thing is is like from you know from studying so many movies from being taught how to study movies and then studying so many movies and paying attention to all these weird little details and shit. Um, the way that they panned in and cantered to her so much throughout the movie. Because, they did a lot of close-ups, I mean, yeah. They, with, how, with how they, you know, closed up and, you know, initiated action within the first five minutes of the movie, you were in major fight scenes between... You know James McAvoy and Bruce Willis's characters. You know you had the Beast fighting. You know, crazy Invincible Dad there. Like Jesus Christ, five minutes in, you're fucking balls deep in the movie. You're like, wait, what the fuck? 
like this is awesome like way to fucking hook and just keep fucking going you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so right there i was like man this is gonna be a different movie than was forecasted from the trailers and stuff um didn't quite i am legend us they didn't just give us nothing they gave us small tidbits just enough to make it confusing and it was it it added to the uh, the depth of the movie that they were able to pull off in a shorter amount of time but yeah just due to her her face and how they panned in on it and they kept zooming in on it and giving her those custom close-ups Whereas there was not that much of that with any other character. I was like, she's a bigger part of this movie than they're letting on to be. And I don't know why. I figured she might kill somebody in the end or both of them or all of them or have them executed or some shit. When she leaned up against the back of the van after, you know, Jane Yeah, McElroy's that leaned character. up against the back of the van when he got shot. I was like, oh. And I was like, she probably set this up to where she could take down somebody if she needed it. And then it zoomed in on the, the sniper's fucking hand, that little custom fucking shamrock, you know, tattoo. shamrock tattoo, that three-leaf clover. And I was like, bruh, wait, what the fuck? Does that have to do with anything? Yeah, they really made it a point that you saw that. And then that was the other thing, and then it goes over and, you know, Bruce Willis's character laying in the puddle of water trying to like you know regain his strength from being in the water for so long and stuff he's trying to regain his strength and whatnot and you see the army boots walking up and I was like oof I feel like this is not a good guy and they yokes him up and starts dragging him and I was like okay they zoomed in on that fucking puddle earlier. Yeah, and they hella for foreshadowed that. Yeah, so I was like, like, oh, James McAvoy's going to get him with the puddle. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, there's too much foreshadowing on that, though, at the same time. Like, the timing was just not right for James McAvoy's character to do that. So I was like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, he must just get, like, fucked up situation and end up in that puddle to where he can't. He doesn't even have the strength to get up or some shit. Like, maybe he gets pinned while somebody else is doing something I was trying to figure it the fuck out and then seeing you know Mr. fucking SWAT boots walk up and yoke him up I was like oh shit okay as he's getting drowned you see the fucking tattoo again you're like that's not the same guy Mm. can't be the same guy yeah so I was like fucking yeah when she's like grab my hand I was like ah she's gonna fuck him somehow and he like touched her and then he got like the fucking the sense of what was going on with his like superpower yeah it was like oh this bitch it's like secret society all right cool yep like i knew she was going to be something like that i was like with like her whole situation like it seemed like she knew too much about him like when they like go to the asylum and she's like this room set up with this hypnotic light so that way if you have like a dangerous personality come out it'll flash and it'll change the personality then she's like I know all about your phobia of waters. I set up all these hoses in your room. That way, you know, if, like, fuck, can you do something? Like, we'll hit you with hoses. Yeah. And I was like, she knows a lot about these guys, even though they're, like, supposed to be pretty unknown at that point. And she was too pushy with her wanting to convince them that it wasn't real. A real shrink isn't that pushy. Well, and also off. she's like, I only have three days. Yeah, she I was has like, three why days. Why do you only have three days? Yeah, and I was like, first off, you wouldn't be so pushy. Second off, there's no reason why they would only give you three days to shrink eval or change somebody. Um, so that doesn't make any fucking sense. Which means she got, you know, she, you know, they set it up to where the other shrink, the initial shrink, got like sick, quote unquote, um, and had to have a filler for you know for a certain amount of time or something so i was like that's a fucking trip and then when they were panning in all the cameras getting set up though i knew something was up with that and i was like huh okay well that's a little bit over foreshadowed you know yeah so so if we have a hundred cameras i was like ah it's gonna come back to bite you in the ass yeah, well, they showed, like, six fucking cameras being installed before they even got to that. So it was like, they're going a little bit fucking extra with this foreshadowing for some reason. So it's got to play in later. But then the whole time I was like, oh, well, you know, 
Mr. Glass is just going to be able to hack that mainframe. He put in a fucking, you know, firewall or a back wall to, like, a back door to be able to access their computer system and get those files, um, those video files or some shit. Yeah, That's well, I remember I when they thinking. were, like, go to the basement. I was like, why are they going to the basement? Like, you know. Yeah. So, overall, if you were to give, like, the movie a rating, 1 to 10. That is a good question. I, I'd say, I'd say a solid eight. I was gonna say solid eight. Yeah, yeah. Like it had some parts that were fairly obvious, but overall, like killer acting all the way around. No shit. Great acting, or actually original story, which no. is super rare these days. Good plot twists that yeah. weren't overdone. Thank you, M Night Shyamalan, for not managing to fuck that one up. That's yeah. original. Um, uh, great character development, great side characters like the son, the mom of Mr. Glass, and the fucking the chick who the was ex, like the victim. Yeah, the ex like, victim. Yeah, it was like they were like really, really good side characters, and they were all like decent good actors too, which is nice because you don't always see that in side characters. But yeah. yeah, I mean overall, like yeah, I definitely give it a solid date, and I definitely recommend people go watch it. Oh yeah. Obviously, first watch Unbreakable and watch Split. Cause it's gonna fill in more. It'll you it'll make more sense. Exactly, exactly. But overall, yeah, definitely recommend it. Definitely worth a watch. Honestly, I'll probably go. Um, I don't think I have any of them. I used to have Unbreakable on DVD, but I I don't think I have any of them right now. So I think I might go fucking pick them all up. You know, throw in a box set or some shit. Cause. But the block that's going to be coming out, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I have to be. But the original movie just by itself was a great standalone movie. Um, so I was surprised, you know, in in Split coming out or whatever and kind of tying into it, I was like, that's kind of a weird thing that they would do that, but it's cool. I mean, I understand it, but it's, but like it doesn't really, it's not necessary. It doesn't need to be. So I was like, well, that's cool. Like They threw in a little bit of extra for, you know, people who've seen it. They didn't know that they were going to be busting out a third one and tying it all in and shit and making it a universe. So I was like, so, oh, shit. So final question before I end this podcast, do you think they should continue it on? Yeah, despite the fact, like, you know. Honestly, I want to see. Spoiler, like, like, obviously, like, most of the main characters died. Yeah, all of the main characters died except for the side characters. The side main all characters. All kind of got together the side characters of the main characters but do you think they'll continue together. it on with Dude, the ending honestly that'd be kind of cool to see like you know maybe if the side characters kind of had their own special abilities in some fashion or sense that all kind of you know ties and plays into the situations to where they never really knew that they had powers because they were for they were um in the shadow in the shadow of the other you know the other character that they were you know, side charactering for the, the first few movies. So that'd be pretty cool. I mean, the mom obviously is old as shit now, so she's well on her way to deathbed early, mm-hmm. but maybe like an oracle power for her or some shit. And Something more passive, yeah. The Whisper, if you notice, like, um, that was like a really fucking zoomed in on thing with the sun. Um, and I feel like that's the chick, you know, able to bring you know, Kevin from the beast, which nobody had done before, you know, and this, that, and the other thing completely immobilized the beast, which was crazy. Um, yeah, I feel like that'd be, I feel like they could, you know, pull another movie or two out of it easily and just kind of like make it, you know, a comic booky style movie. Not sure if it'd be any kind of great or anything, but yeah, that's my only concern. It was like all three of those movies were really good movies. So I'm concerned if they push it to a fourth or a fifth, that yeah, they might, might start to lose quality. Yeah. So. Fast and the Furious. We'll see. I thought they tied it up in a really nice way, though. They yeah. tied it up to where they, which they did with all the other movies. That's too. what I'm saying. Like the first. They tied movie, it up in a really up. like Second nice movie, tied up. bow way where if they don't make another one, I'll be completely satisfied. Yeah. It's fucking weird. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for listening to our review of Glass and definitely go watch it as it hit theaters like two days ago. So if you haven't seen it yet, get out there and watch it. But in the meantime, check out our other episodes at nerdsrus.com. That's N-R-D-S-R-U-S.com. And you can also find us at our YouTube at youtube.com slash nerdsrus. 
You can also find our Patreon under the same website. We'd appreciate the monetary support. Get some more cool gear, all that kind of jazz. You know, go to Comic Con. That'd be pretty fucking sweet. But if you don't and you just listen, cool story too. But in the meantime, have a great week. Stay nerdy and stay classy.